Arc de Triomphe, one of the most important monuments in Paris which no tourist can miss. It is 50 meters high and 45 meters wide. A magnificent building. But the triumphal arch was not a French invention. The very name Arc de Triomphe, Arch of Triumph, refers to Roman times. What about the origin and model for the famous Arc de Triomphe? Here, it is located in the Roman Forum, in the middle of Rome, the Arch of Titus, a single-door triumphal arch. It has one single passage, just like the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. About the size. The Arch of Titus is about 15.4 meters high and 13.5 meters wide. Compared to the Arch of Triumph in Paris, it appears small and tiny. As a reminder, El Arc de Triomphe is 50 meters high and 45 meters wide. This means that the Arch of Titus fits three times next to each other and three times stacked on top of each other in the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. In Rome there are three surviving triumphal arches we can see today. The Arch of Titus is the oldest of them and it is located on the eastern edge of the Roman Forum on the Via Sacra. At the top of the arch we find the inscription The Senate and People of Rome Dash We have to add here, dedicate this to the divine Titus Vespasian Augustus, son of the divine Vespasian. Devo Tito, that means that Emperor Titus was deified after his death. It was his successor and his brother Emperor Domitian who caused Emperor Titus to be deified. The order for construction of the arch was given by Emperor Domitian as well, shortly after Titus' death. Why was the Arch of Titus built? The Arch of Titus commemorates the victories of Emperor Titus in Judea and the triumphal processions of the Emperor. In general, triumphal arches in Rome were built exclusively to glorify particularly important victories. They were always commissioned by the Roman Senate. Roman triumphal arches are popular models in the history of architecture. Later I will show you more examples of famous arches from then and now in Europe and all over the world. If you like this video, please follow my channel and give me a thumb up. That helps a lot. Thank you for that. Back to Paris to Arc de Triomphe. The Arc de Triomphe was also intended to commemorate military successes. Emperor Napoleon I personally decided to build the arch to glorify his victory at the Battle of Austerlitz. Construction work began in 1806. However, Emperor Napoleon was less successful with his military campaigns in the following years. After the disastrous outcome of the campaign against Russia and other problems, Napoleon finally abdicated the throne in 1814. Now the construction work on the arch was completely stopped. Only 10 years later, construction work finally continued and the arch was completed in 1836. Here we are in Munich, Germany. Munich is famous for its beer festival and Bavarian traditions. In this picture we see the Siegestor, English Victory Gate, in Munich. It is a memorial arch with three archways. We remember the Arch of Titus in Rome and the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, they both have only one archway, one gate. 
The Siegister, in Munich, was built between 1843 and 1850. It dates from the same period as the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. In this era, it was popular in architecture to be closely based on ancient buildings. We find the model for the Siegister again in Rome. It is the Arch of Constantine, at 25 meters high. It is the largest, and also the youngest of the three surviving triumphal arches in Rome. Dedicated in 315, it is close to the Colosseum. The Arch of Constantine commemorates Constantine's victory at the Milvian Bridge against his opponent Maxentius. The third surviving triumphal arch in Rome is the Arch of Septimius Severus in the Roman Forum, also a three-gate triumphal arch. The Arch of Septimius Severus was built in honor of the Roman Emperor Septimius Severus and his sons Caracalla and Gita in 203 to commemorate their successes against the Parthians. Only in Rome were these arches called triumphal arches because only in Rome were there triumphal processions. Here on the Roman Forum, we can see the Arch of Titus at the end on the right, and at the back the Colosseum, there is the Arch of Constantine. To the left is the Septimius Severus Arch in Rome. The triumphal arches were not located just anywhere, but rather they stood along a precisely defined path that a Roman triumph took. Now I give you a few explanations about the triumphal procession in Rome. In ancient Rome, a triumphal procession was the ceremonial entry of a victorious military commander or emperor. On the map we see the typical path of a Roman triumph. The start was at Campus Martius, outside the city's sacred boundary. The procession entered the city through Porta Triumphalis, in English, Triumphal Gate. The Porta Triumphalis was probably somewhere here. It continued through the site of the Circus Flaminius, then towards the Circus Maximus, afterwards turn left towards the Colosseum, where the Arch of Constantine is located. The procession entered the Via Sacra, then the Forum, the Arch of Titus is here, and there the Arch of Septimius Severus. Finally, it ascended the Capitolium, or Capitoline Hill, to the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus, the term capital. When many people hear this term, they first think of Washington and the United States Congress, which is named after the Capitolium in Rome. During the neoclassical style period, from approximately 1760 to 1850, the name capital was applied to some buildings. The most important is the Capitol in Washington, D.C., seat of the U.S. Congress. However, the name capital was not inspired by the Roman hill, but rather by its ancient main temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus there, the Capitolium. I already told you a triumph was a huge event. Many people traveled to Rome from outside to witness the spectacle. Wooden stands were set up along the streets for spectators. A lot of people also fit into the Circus Flaminius and the Circus Maximus to celebrate the triumph. Here we see the triumph of Lucius Emilius Paulus, circa 165 BC, for his victory against the Macedonians. The triumphant of a triumph usually rode at the end of the triumphal procession on a quadriga. A quadriga that is a chariot, drawn by four horses side by side. There we see his soldiers following the triumphant, 
as far as possible, captured leaders, were taken along in the triumphal procession, too. Here it is the captured king of Macedonia with his hands tied. Of course, the spoils of war were also presented to the cheering spectators, however, the painter has forgotten the audience here, and the center of Rome is not by the sea either. On that picture from Peter Paul Rubens, there are spectators. At the front end of the triumphal procession, walk the senators, magistrates, and also hornblowers. We also see decorated sacrificial animals. They were ultimately to be sacrificed to Jupiter Optimus Maximus on the Capitol. Elephants were also used as draft animals for chariots. Now I show you famous arches from from Roman times and later, in Europe and beyond. Archaeologists like to distinguish between a true triumphal arch in Rome, built to celebrate an actual Roman triumph, and a memorial arch on the other side, essentially built by emperors to celebrate themselves. These memorial arches can be found throughout the Roman Empire. Arch of Trajan in Timgad, Algeria, 2nd century AD. Arch of Caracalla, at Volubilis, Morocco, 2nd or 3rd century AD. Arch of Septimius Severus in Leptis Magna, Libya, 2nd century AD. Hadrian's Gate in Antalya, Turkey, 2nd century AD. Those were memorial arches from Roman times. But Roman triumphal arches became models for later architecture around the world. Australia, Arch of Victory in Ballarat, Victoria 1920. India, Mumbai. Gateway of India 1924 London, Wellington Arch, 1830, now at Hyde Park Corner Russia St. Petersburg Narva Triumphal Arch, 1834 Potsdam, Brandenburg Gate, built 1770 North Korea Pyongyang, tallest triumphal arch in the world, 60 meters high opened in 1982, New York, and so on. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Please click on the bell icon to get new video updates.